In this video, what I'll be doing is modifying one of the speaker boxes, one of the 6x9 speaker boxes. I've got some base radiators that I will be attaching to them, uh, hopefully. Also, I won't be talking throughout this video, although I will be talking because I'll put my vocals in afterwards. So yeah, anyway, here is the video I made. So here we are then, this is the box that I'm going to be working on. And as you can see, this is a Sony speaker that is inside the box. And I don't know what I'm doing here with my finger, but the surround on this is, it's a paper cone. So the surround is also paper, kind of cool. But other than that, um, the speaker is not bad. I don't know why I have the Sony speakers inside the box, but they're in there. So uh, yes, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take them out because we need to take these out in order to do what I'm about to do. And out comes the screws. So I actually do have audio in this. I mean, obviously the camera records audio, but I wasn't talking. I thought I'd do it afterwards and that's what I'm doing right now. Um, out comes the speaker. Detaching the crocodile clips. So yeah, I decided to get some base radiators and try this way because I already ported this box and uh, here we have the hole that I cut out for the port. I'm gonna plug the porthole back up I'm basically just going to glue that into place right there. So I'm not going to test the difference between a ported box and a box with base radiators. These also have a nice amount of weight to them. So if I actually want to lower the tuning on these base radiators, I can just add some weight to them. They're not designed to have weight added to them, but I'll just stick some weight onto them. And what we have in the center of these base radiators is a metal plate. So right here I was saying whoever put this speaker terminal on, put it on bent. So this box as well is not the best built box in the world, but then again it's not the worst. So I did have to seal up some of these gaps inside the box because like I said it wasn't built properly, but um, it is now fully sealed and uh, works like a charm. So when I got these boxes, I had to stick down the carpet because it was coming up at certain places and the glue that I used actually worked really well. So luckily that hole where the speaker terminal goes is around 16 millimeters wide. So that is just about covered by the base radiator. So this is how I'm gonna be positioning them. Now I'm pretty sure it's going to work just fine like this. I mean obviously I know it's going to work fine because I've already done this and I'm talking after the fact. So uh, this is the way I'm doing it. So I'm just basically going to draw an outline around these and then I'll draw a line on the inside of the line that I've already drawn and that will be the inner part of the base radiator where it will go and uh, that is where I will apply the glue. That line is also the line that I will cut along. So uh, yes, that is the way I'm doing this. I'm not really measuring anything out because I don't really need to. And um, yes, and here I am drawing the inner lines by eye. I'm pretty good at drawing stuff by eye. So uh, don't need to measure anything out. So as you can see, there's a little gap right there where that speaker terminal was. That will be sealed up, no problemo. And here we have the lines and everything all drawn out. Right, so the speaker terminal I'm going to attach right there at the top where the port originally was. So I'll make the hole for this once I actually glue the piece of wood that I cut out for the port back in. Okay, so right here I've put in a drill bit and I'm going to drill four holes in the corners of these lines that I've drawn. They will help me when it comes to putting in the jigsaw blade and cutting along the lines. That is the only reason that I've done this. So you might be thinking to yourself, well you didn't really need to do that on this bit because there's a giant hole right there in the middle. Actually I did have to do that on this bit because otherwise it's going to be hard to turn the jigsaw. And now what I'll do is I'll just fast forward these bits. And here we have all the holes made. And here we have a bit of a top down angle. So this right here is the jigsaw blade that will fit into the holes and once it fits in I'll just cut straight and uh, yes. Okay so this bit actually surprised me right now because I forgot that I did it. 
Um, for some reason, I wanted to check out this circular hole cutting thing, um, but uh, just ignore that. Okay, so I tried it on the top square as well, but uh, here we have the base radiator, and as you can see, it's working quite nicely. So there we have the square cut out using the jigsaw. So here I am just using the razor to sort of even out these bumps that were left by these screws that the guy used to fix the speaker terminal into place. So at first what I was going to do was place one base radiator on the back, one on the side and the other one on the other side. But then I thought, you know what, let's maybe remove the speaker terminal and place all three of them on the back. Now the base radiators on the back will help with the base because they will be facing the walls and the corners of the room. Usually that tends to increase the base frequencies. So yeah, once again, don't get it twisted. This is just a bit of an experiment just to see how it goes. So if it turns out to be something decent, you can do it too. Okay, so the way I'm going to be fixing these base radiators into place is with some hot glue. And when you work with hot glue, you've got to work fast because it dries pretty quick. So as you can see, I've placed a base radiator onto the glue as quickly as I could. And then what I'm going to be doing is just blobbing some glue around the edges of the base radiator to keep it in place. And I'm going to be doing the same for the second and third base radiators that I fixed to the box. This is obviously just an experiment. I have no idea how this is going to sound. Now, I don't own an audio fabrication shop or anything like that, so I don't really care about what people think about the work that I do. And once again, this is just an experiment, and if you want to do the same, if it turns out to be something decent, then you can do the same too. Um, don't know why I repeated that, but there you go. So um, this is the third base radiator being put into place. It's kind of hard to work with hot glue sometimes. Now one of the benefits of working with hot glue in this scenario is that it raises the base radiator off of the wood a little bit. Let's say for example you haven't cut out the holes properly. Um, the glue is going to raise the base radiator off of the wood a little bit so you know you're going to have that little extra clearance. And here you can see me pushing them in a bit just to give them a bit of a test and they are working perfectly. So this right here is the piece of wood that was cut out originally for the base port. And I'm going to put this back in, I'm just going to glue it in because that is the simplest and easiest way to do it. Simplest does mean easiest, so I don't know why I said simplest and easiest, but uh, it's straightforward. Um, just got to wait for the glue to dry and then I'll turn the box upside down and blob some more glue on the gaps on the inside so it keeps it in nice and firmly. And there we go, just blobbing some more glue into the gaps on the top. By the way, I'm holding this into place so it doesn't fall through with my left hand, which is inside the box. Okay, so here we have an inside view of the box and the base radiators. It looks a little messy, but it's fine. And there we have the hole that I've made for the speaker terminal, which will fit just like this. And as you can see, it fits in there nicely. So what I'm doing here is just marking where the holes for the screws are going to go. So these are the screws that I'm going to be using. They are the screws that I took out from the back. Whoever made this box in the first place didn't use pilot holes, which is the reason I had to use a razor to sort of flatten out the bumps where one of the base radiators would be in place. So I was about to do something with the drill and then I realised that my battery was dead. Not my battery, the drill's battery. So I replaced it because I have two batteries and on we go with the drilling. 
So here we have the pilot holes made, and before I do anything else, vacuum. And there we go, that's the speaker terminal back into place along with the carpet. Looks nice, doesn't it? So I'm not too sure about placing carpet around these because that's going to be quite a bit of work and I don't really care about it. Plus there's a few gaps here and there which I could probably cover up, I'm not really too bothered about them though. So I'll probably just cut this carpet up and uh, leave the back of the box bare more or less. Right here though what I was thinking of doing was cutting out squares to match the base radiators but that seemed like a lot more work than it was worth. So I didn't bother doing that, instead I did this. Can you see the lines on the edges of the box right there on the carpet? Well, check this out. Boom! I'm just going to leave the box like that. I'm not going to be able to see it. You're not going to be able to see it. I mean, you can see it right now, but when the speaker's in place, you're not going to see that unless I actually show you it. And I'm not going to see that either unless I show me it. So the make of this glue is Copydex and it works really well on carpets and uh, speaker boxes but basically I used this originally on this carpet when I got the boxes and it worked really well. So I'm using it again on this because I don't use the glue for anything else and uh, it seems to be a bit of a waste to just leave it lying around without using it so here we are using it. Here I am just blobbing some more glue around the edges and then I'm going to stick the carpet to it. And here's the carpet coming up and over, and on it goes, like so. Like a saw, very good. And here we have the side of the box, which I think is originally the bottom of the box, I'm not too sure, but I'm gonna apply some more glue to this and stick the carpet to it. So here we have the back of the box, and that is the way it's gonna look from now on. And uh, that right there is the top of the box where the terminals will go. In the next video, what I'll be doing is testing this out and comparing it to the sealed version of this box. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.